In this video, we want to talk about the performance ratio. The performance ratio is a key indicator which is mainly used in the photovoltaic business. So we have the performance ratio or abbreviated PR. Uh, what we need is, first of all, of course, uh, we want um, to define um, the full load arrows in a different manner uh, in the photovoltaic sector. So we have the energy E, which is measured in kilowatt hours or megawatt hours, etc. Then we have the capacity or the nominal power. Of a PV system, P that is given in kilowatt peak. So the PV business typically uses the, this index peak uh, to demonstrate that that is the uh, capacity under lab conditions. So we have defined the lab condition in a previous video. These are these standard testing conditions with an irradiance of 1000. Uh, watts per square meter we have had the module temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and an air mass of 1.5 so that are our uh, <clears throat> let's call them lab condition uh, and the this peak power is only valid for these lab conditions which do not occur um, under a normal condition and then we can define the ratio of the energy over the power. So we normalize the energy uh, to the peak power. And that is called uh, the specific yield. Y, this is E over P. And the unit of the specific yield is kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. So of course, this is a definition of the full load hours. Um, so you can of course call this the full load hours of a PV system. The unit is of course just the hours or the time, uh, but the PV business typically uses uh, this uh, this unit uh, to to show that this are the or this, that this is the specific yield. Um, you can use the specific yield to compare different systems uh, which are uh, installed in a similar location uh, um, with uh, similar conditions, so uh, similar uh, orientation and inclination of modules. Um, then you can can compare this value. Typically, the PV systems have a yield a specific yield of full loads of let's say one thousand in Central Europe up to two thousand, two thousand one hundred. Uh, close to the equator and um, that are the, the way you can expect for a PV system um, of course regarding the radiation condition at the location and the mountain condition um, you have. Next we have the definition of the performance ratio. So the performance ratio is uh, the ratio of this specific yield um, divided by the uh, radiation so that gives us an idea of the system efficiency of our PV system so the equation uh, regarding all the regulations are uh, is that the performance ratio is the energy uh, divided by the radiation in module plane multiplied by the area of the modules, multiplied by the efficiency of the modules. So that is the radiation in the module plane. So not the horizontal one, but the one uh, regarding the inclined uh, modules. A is the, the area of uh, the PV generator of, of, of all PV modules. And ether is uh, the efficiency. So what you can now do is we can use this, you know, take this equation and do some uh, manipulations because uh, this equation is not that um, helpful. 
what we can do is we can say okay the efficiency is uh, the power we get from our uh, modules over the power under optimal or stc conditions uh, so we can say that is the nominal power in, in watt peak uh, over the area of the surface times and then these optimal conditions is 1000 watts per square meter um, so the stc um, radiation and then we can can define okay this is the power over a times and then let's call this kappa uh, this uh, factor and kappa is one kilowatt or one thousand watts per square meter so that we can abbreviate this factor and if we now use uh, this definition of the uh, of the efficiency and use it in this equation, uh, what do we get? Um, we have the performance, the ratio, that is then E over G times A times, and then we have P over A times kappa, so we can get rid of uh, the surface uh, or the area. We do not need the, the area uh, anymore. Uh, and then we get uh, kappa, times E over G times P, um, or in the other way around, we have uh, kappa times E over P, and that divided by the radiation. And uh, E over P is just the, uh, the specific yield, so this is Y over G times kappa, and that's the uh, more useful way uh, to, to write down the performance ratio. The, ra the performance ratio is more or less uh, the specific yield, so the full load hours over the uh, radiation in module plane. Um, of course, this equation does not, or the, the units does not fit, do not fit, so we need this factor kappa uh, to, to uh, fit the units uh, as the performance ratio is just a, a value uh, without any unit. But you can just keep in mind that the performance ratio is the ratio of the specific yield over uh, the radiation. And that gives uh, you an idea of uh, what is the, the ratio the PV system can um, convert or to use the radiation and what is the, the uh, factor uh, of the radiation which is transformed into electricity. Um, so there's something like a system efficiency um, you, you can you find the performance ratio as the system efficiency um, of a PV system. Let's make a quick example um, what is a typical value of the performance ratio so typically you take annual uh, values to derive the performance ratio of course you can calculate the performance ratio on a shorter interval uh, on a monthly or daily basis, but um, mainly the performance ratio is an annual indicator. Um, so let's make an example. I think what we have um, a radiation in module plane. So GM is 1200 kilowatt hours per square meter. Um, we have a capacity of our PV system of 50 kilowatt peak and an annual energy. Uh, production or yield of 51,000 kilowatt hours. So, um, first of all, we derive uh, the specific yield. So, what is the specific yield? Y is E over P. So, what we get is we have uh, 51 megawatt hours over 50 kilowatt peak. That gives us 1,020 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak, or 1,020 uh, 1, full load hours, but we uh, keep to this uh, definition of the specific yield. And then we have the performance ratio, PR, that is, of course, our uh, unit uh, factor kappa times uh, Y over GM. So what we get is the performance ratio that is. Uh, this factor one kilowatt over square meter times, and then we have one 
1020 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak divided by 1200 kilowatt hours per square meter so you see why we need this uh, factor to correct the unit because this ratio um, is not unit less uh, and what we just get is a factor of 0.85 or 85 percent so that is the performance ratio um, that's a typical value for modern PV systems in Central Europe for example um, so what does this mean this factor of um, 0.85 or performance ratio of 85 percent uh, this uh, well you reflects all the losses neglecting the efficiency of the module so all other losses uh, we, we need to consider like uh, losses due to the transformation uh, or the efficiency of the inverter uh, the losses uh, coming from the cables uh, temperature losses by the modules etc so overall we get um, we have 50 percent losses within the system um, and 85% uh, of the yield or of the, of the radiation is converted to electricity. So what you can, can do is you can write the, the overall efficiency the, or the total efficiency of a PV system. That's the efficiency of the modules times the performance ratio. So that are the loss, that is the efficiency of the modules. Uh, of the modules so that's the value between 15 or let's say 20 percent uh, and then we have the performance ratio and overall we get uh, this total efficiency and um, so if you have an efficiency of 0.2 percent uh, times 0.85 Eight five percent so the, the efficiency of the modules times our performance ratio um, and that gives us overall a total efficiency of 0.17 so that is the total efficiency of a, of a PV system so 70 percent of the radiation is converted to electricity um, with we have losses within the modules, so the, the transformation of the sunlight to electricity, and then the performance ratio uh, considers all the other losses which are occurring um, in a PV system. If you have a look at uh, triple values of the performance ratio, you see here that's the slope of the performance ratio uh, over uh, one year of the system uh, installed in Central Europe. Um, the green bars represent the specific yield uh, smaller values of course in, in, in spring a larger values during the summertime and then the smallest values of course during winter time uh, and these blue dots represent the performance ratio uh, or this the, per month uh, the mean value or this mean performance ratio um, in this case is uh, about 85 percent so we are uh, somewhere here if this performance this is the mean performance ratio uh, 85% uh, of course this this uh, slope of or this characteristic over the month is typical for the performance ratio we'll have to uh, look at this later on so the performance ratio is not constant they are uh, factors which are influencing the performance ratio like the module temperature or the radiation distribution um, but overall you get this typical uh, slope of this curve, curve with higher values in during spring slightly smaller values uh, in the um, summer month and then the smallest value of course uh, during uh, winter time and if you have a look at the situation what is the uh, performance ratio um, Per month on the left hand side you see what is happening uh, during uh, January so smaller volumes you see the full hours per day on the first uh, on the left y-axis and uh, on the right hand side you see the situation uh, during uh, July so of course larger specific yield of full hour volumes uh, in, in summer month 
And what you see is again these blue dots represent the performance ratio. So you see this variation of the performance ratio uh, during um, winter time. You see even here on the 17th of um, of July, you see there is nearly no energy production. We have a specific yield which is close to zero due to heavy clouds in this period. Um, and you see the performance ratio on, on the 17th of January is just 25%. Uh, so we might think, oh, oh god damn, there's a, there's a problem with the PV system. We have a technical issue. No, this, this value is correct. Um, the, the, the system cannot produce on a higher level uh, due to the temperature and radiation conditions uh, on this day. Um, and that's um, critical regarding the performance ratio that the, the value per day does not give you any information about the quality of the system. Uh, you see this variation and uh, there, there is no technical issue during this, this uh, period. You see here that the, the 12th of July, the performance ratio is smaller than the day before or after. Um, and everything is fine. There is no technical issue. So in particular during the winter month, you have to keep in mind that um, the variation of the performance ratio is rather large. During the summer month, you see the performance ratio is rather constant, uh, lying between 80 and 90 percent. Everything is fine. Uh, but again, you see even on the 11th of July, you see the performance ratio is large, although the yield is small. So again, this does not give you any direct information about the quality of the system if there is any technical issue. So uh, the performance ratio is more or less a long-term well, you're not a short-term one. So um, keep this in mind um, and just rely on the annual value that is helpful uh, for interpretation and to identify um, technical issues, long-term issues, um, but uh, the performance ratio is not a short-term uh, indicator. So why does the performance ratio depend um, on uh, the radiance and the temperature? Uh, what we can do is um, we have had this equation that the performance ratio is the energy over the radiation in module plane multiplied by the area times the efficiency. And the efficiency now depends on the one hand on the module temperature. The higher the temperature is, the smaller the efficiency is. And um, the efficiency of the modulus depends on the radiation itself, because what you have is, for example, if you have uh, the radiation or the irradiance uh, in watts per, uh, per square meter, so that is 1000 watts per square meter, um, and that is the efficiency of the, of the modules, um, what do you get? You get, uh, or you might get different curves depending on the type of, of modules. What you have is uh, these slope of curves with an increase and then a slight decrease until we reach this. This is the uh, STC irradiance. So that is the value of our um, the efficiency which is given uh, on the data sheet. But what you uh, find is that different uh, modules have a different slope of this efficiency curve as this efficiency curve uh, varies uh, with the um, with the uh, irradiance. So if you have 500 watts per square meter over there and although the, the efficiency on the on the data sheet is the same what you can get is let's say I mean, a different module something like that, this slope of the curve so smaller values, then slightly larger, and then same efficiency uh, on the data sheet, but the slope of this curve is different. And this, uh, of course, um, directly uh, changes uh, the performance ratio. That gives you uh, an explanation why, on the one hand, this uh, the values during the, the winter months might vary, because the efficiency varies with the um, uh, with the irradiance. On the other hand, of course, uh, we have this uh, dependency on the module temperature. Um, so uh, during uh, summer month, if the ambient temperature is larger, and of course we have uh, high irradiance values, the modules will heat up, and this will reduce the efficiency. That is the reason why you um, get this slope of the curve, that during uh, spring you have uh, sufficient or high irradiance values, but small ambient temperatures, so high efficiency. 
and that gives you a higher performance ratio uh, during the summer month, June, July, August, with uh, larger ambient temperatures, although the overall radiation is larger. But uh, due to this higher module temperatures, we have a reduced efficiency of the modules, and that explains the drop of the performance ratio. And during the, uh, the winter month, we have this smaller values due to smaller radiance values and a significant smaller efficiency of the modules and uh, that reduces uh, also the performance ratio. So you have to keep this in mind if you want to use this performance ratio on different time intervals on a monthly or even daily basis um, that the performance ratio depends on the module temperature and the radiance pattern. Um, if you use the performance ratio on an annual basis, uh, there isn't a problem, of course, uh, even on, in this, uh, on this time period, you might uh, observe variations of the performance ratio as in, in warmer years, uh, you will identify smaller performance ratio values. Finally, you have to consider that you have an appropriate uh, measurement system so that you can measure uh, in particular the uh, radiation. What you can see here are two different types of radiation sensors. On the left hand side you have a pyranometer which, um, with a very high accuracy. And on the right hand side you have this crystalline sensor. Crystalline sensor that is more or less a uh, solar cell which uh, measures uh, the radiation. So the pyranometer has a high accuracy uh, compared to the crystalline sensor. So overall if you compare the accuracy of, this, uh, of the pyranometer it's an accuracy of um, accuracy of 1 to 2 percent and uh, the crystalline sensor has an accuracy of let's say about 5 percent. So uh, less uh, accurate and uh, these parameters are used at weather stations so they are reliable due to the accuracy so used in weather stations and the crystalline sensor um, does not cover the full spectrum and um, so typically you have a loss of or this this crystalline uh, Sensor measures, measures, let's say, four to six percent less radiation compared to the pyranometer. So we have to keep this in mind. Um, so the the nominal power and all the lab conditions, uh, the radiation conditions, are measured with a pyranometer. So that's the um, basis you have for the radiation data. Uh, and if you just have a crystalline sensor on site, um, you have a different, um, you, you get a different spectrum, you get a different radiation value, which are slightly smaller than the uh, one which is used, for example, in, in yield reports or in the technical due diligence. Uh, this data or this interpretation relies on parameter values. And uh, what does this mean for the performance ratio if we have, uh, for example, uh, some uh, performance ratio guarantees in an O and M contract uh, that uh, the the operator of the PV system must reach a specific performance ratio level. You need, of course, a, a appropriate uh, system to measure the radiation. Uh, for example, uh, if this um, think about the situation, we have an annual energy production, for example, of um, say 82.4 megawatt hours and a nominal power of our PV system of 81.8 kilowatt peak. Um, and now uh, if you um, have the measurement, the radiation measurement of the parameter and uh, coming from the crystalline sensor, what we have is let's call this uh, GP for the radiation of the um, uh, of the perimeter that is 1168 kilowatt hours per square meter and GC for the crystalline sensor. This is slightly smaller, this is just 1112 
kilowatt hours per square meter. And if you derive now or calculate the performance ratio, you get two different values. So the performance ratio of the or based on the parameter values uh, gives you a performance ratio of 86.3%. And the performance ratio, of course, of the crystalline sensor, this is larger as the um, the radiation is smaller. We've seen the performance ratio is uh, copper times E over P over GM, so the radiation in module plane, and uh, the performance ratio based on the crystalline sensor is 90.6%, so larger uh, as this uh, radiation value is smaller, so you divide by a smaller value and get a larger performance ratio. So. Um, of course, this one on the left-hand side, this performance ratio based on the parameter radiation measurement, this is the correct one. If you use an inappropriate, inappropriate uh, system, you get the wrong performance ratio value. Of course, this might look better, but this value does not help to uh, do any um, elevation of the yield production of the system. So keep this in mind. Uh, if you um, have any performance ratio guarantees or uh, restrictions or limits, whatever, um, during the operation phase of a PV system that you have an op appropriate uh, system to measure the radiation by using the uh, pyranometers.